face to face. And today we we're going to talk about South America. We're going to talk about Ecuador, Bolivia, Chile. I'm with Flavia. Welcome back to Face to Face. Last time we spoke, we uh, talked about uh, Rafael Correa on Ecuador, and then and then now you have a new government with uh, somebody who worked with Correa, who has been elected, Lenin Moreno, and who upside on the whole political process who has been developed for decades. And, and now it's destroying more or less everything. Uh, so can we start from there? And, yes, and welcome I, to Face to Face. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> for back. having. <laughs> yes, thank you for having me again. I just want for the audience uh, that has not seen our first interview, I've been making a film about the ex-president of Ecuador, Rafael Correa, who changed many things in Ecuador, gave people opportunities, improved the country. Everybody, infrastructures. Infrastructure, and everybody was happy. Yeah. And then another candidate won on his party, Lenin Moreno, and he was supposed to continue the work of Rafael Correa. What happens is, once he took over, he became the president, people started feeling that something was different. And he's been two years in power now, and he has not followed up on the ideas and also the promises, because he promised, Lenin Moreno, the current president of Ecuador, promised that he would continue the work of Rafael. Yeah. And basically, in two years, the economy has gone upside down. He has sided with powerful groups. And not only that, when he announced an economic package this last October, people stood up and started protesting. Yeah. And what happened was tanks, war tanks on Quito, on, on the streets of no, no, Quito. No, no, I saw some photos. It was like a military A military control. system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and the people were protesting. The indigenous groups came and uh, went to the capital. What happens is he fled the capital and went to Guayaquil and, and was looking for support from powerful people yeah. and politicians. Uh, after 11 days of protests and people were really upset and people are, had decided they were going to stand up, there were a number of people killed by the police. Um, it's very interesting because today we have telephones with video cameras, so people cannot deny what has happened. You can see the police doing very... Yeah unjust yeah. and coward yeah. actions, yeah. like a woman walking on yeah. crutches. I saw old man, like at 70 years old, I mean, they drag him like if it was a, a piece of meat or not even. I mean, Absolutely. And the police with their motorbikes uh, running after, just running with the motorcycle after people, it's all over the internet. Mm -hmm. Actually, there is a group of people who is archiving all these videos because mm -hmm. what happens with the internet is after some time, if, if some groups don't like, they write to Face and Facebook erases it. So th the videos are no longer yeah, blocked. Yeah. blocked. Yeah. So, but what happened in Ecuador was that people were protesting. There was, there was a negotiation because the government was also um, agreeing with the IMF, the International Monetary uh -huh. Fund, to tighten things and, of course, sacrifice the people. The people who work every day, the people who don't have a safety net. Yeah. And so transportation was going to be more costly, uh, oil, petrol was going to be more costly, and the people who live, they, t you know, they t pay check. No, no, but it was not more costly. It was 30% increase on the, on the, on the gallon, I mean, yes, on the oil. Yes, it was, so it was 30%, like more costly in terms of yeah. what the population was going to end up paying. And mm -hmm. on the other hand, the government had forgiven the bankers and debts from powerful groups. Yeah, yeah. And who was going to pay the population? Yeah. So people were protesting. After 11 days, um, they agreed that the, uh, the increases were not going to take place. And so the people stopped protesting. 
Next thing is people start protesting in Chile. So it went from Ecuador to Chileans protesting uh, a, go a president that they were not satisfied with. It had to do with pensions. And people have been protesting since October in Chile. Now, what happens in Chile is the government, the president, uh, Pineda, has been very violent, has blinded more than yeah. 300 young people. Yeah. And then there was a coup in Bolivia. Evo Morales wins the elections. And again, the organization of the American states said there was fraud and there was no fraud. Yeah. But again, the news is always confusing. The mainstream news says that the government, the presidents are fighting to maintain democracy. No, democracy is a government for the people. It's what the people want. But now the meaning of democracy is something else. Yeah. It is what no, the no, presidents they want. They manipulate everything. I mean, it's unbelievable. And again, people don't know. Because if you read, uh, it's like major upheaval in South America, and I, I heard a journalist, an international journalist, talking, and he said it's the orders are coming from Washington. Yeah. From Washington telling the presidents, stay in power, let the people protest, don't give in. So I, I really think that we are at a time in which people are waking up, waking up to the injustice. Because the good presidents are always accused of corruption. And the presidents that do terrible things, kill innocent people, blind innocent people, are stay in power. Mm -hmm. Why do they stay in power? And a guy like Evo Morales, who changed Bolivia, which was the poorest country in South America, gave people opportunities. To the top economical development ever seen in South, Amer in South America. I mean, it's not just at the social level, even at the economical level. The guy was really putting the country together at the economical level, and, and they had to remove it. You know, I heard an interview with Rafael Correa at the time in which all this upheaval was happening. I think it was uh, a British channel that interviewed him and said, why is all this is happening? You were the president. You made life better for the people who didn't have. But you also gave opportunities to the business people. They were making money. Yeah. And you know what Rafael said? The powerful class is not just happy that they, are, they continue making money and that it's a, it's, a, it's a good atmosphere and socially everybody is happy. They want to be superior. And having other people's lives improve doesn't make them happy because then they are no longer superior. Everybody no, is on the no, same no, level. In, in, in Bolivia, that was so discrimination. I mean, it was so much about the fact that it was an indigenous coming from an indigenous community. And then, like, the white people wanted to go back to power with the Bible. I mean, it was like, it was crazy. And, and, and the current president of Bolivia now, there were no elections. Yeah. They just, um, I think what they did in Bolivia was very unfair because they um, attacked, they, they, they attacked uh, Evo's uh, sister's house. The whole population. Uh, it, was, it was like really vandalism. Yeah, yeah. Now, nobody talks about who, is, who are these powerful people that do as they wish. We're going back to, uh, a time in which there's no respect, no law. Powerful people do what they want. Yeah. And I think, but the people are standing up. The people said, it's enough. We're not going to take it anymore. So basically, just uh, to connect things, I haven't finished my documentary about Rafael Correa and how he's changed Ecuador. We're working on it. As you know, it's it's hard to it's raise money. Yeah. A film is usually very costly, mm -hmm. but we're going to finish the film because 
it's an important story. Um, so many countries that were doing well in South America now are in total chaos. Look at Brazil, Brazil. a country where I come from. We have a president that I think won by manipulating the public. So many bad things are happening, and the people who voted for him do not want to accept that they made a mistake, that they were manipulated, and that the country, again, you know, Brazil is a very rich country, and it will take a lot to destroy the country, but they're doing it. And who I mean, they are, at least they are destroying the Amazon, where it, with the fire, and, and now the deforestation, uh, it's just and, and, unbelievable. And Bolsonaro accusing uh, yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio to yeah. be behind the burning of the Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is he, is he like, hallucinating? Yes. I mean, it's like, what's happening? I, th I think people, at the same time that the masses are waking up and are protesting, the middle class and the upper middle class seem to be blind and electing leaders who don't serve everybody. And I'm even talking about the middle class because who wants to live in a chaotic country? Who wants to live in a country that has a lot of poverty? And this was for me what I witnessed when I first went to Ecuador. A lot of retiring uh, retirees had moved to Ecuador because it was a safe country. No, no. It was a beautiful... Even, even, the, even people from the U.S., he was at some point, yes. he was a destination to go to retire in Ecuador for the health uh, infrastructure, for the prices, for the coverage, for the... A lot of... There was a, a, a community yeah. of Americans living there mm -hmm. because it was a safe country, it was a beautiful country. And now Lenin Moreno... And I... I truly believe, because Lenny Moreno seems to be a man of no convictions. Mm -hmm. He was the vice president of Korea. They thought he would be a good candidate, but he he was bought so fast. He sold out so fast. I mean, I saw him, I saw the situation coming when, uh, with... Um, when he turned Assange. Assange. Yes. With Assange, it was like, Something is fishy with this guy, because it's really... Uh... I think uh, uh, Paul Manafort went to Ecuador and had a conversation, yeah. and they must have agreed on some deal. But what is interesting today... No, no, we... but he said, he said, it's because the U.S. proposed a loan at the cheap price against Assange, and he accepts the deal. He said, for the, for the future of, of Ecuador, we're going to give Assange. I mean who is a trap of, of This no... man has no principles. Exactly. He has no principles, and he's like a baby. When the people are protesting, he runs to Guayaquil behind the powerful people. And today, there is an image that really tells where Ecuador is today. At the time of Rafael Correa, in front of the uh, presidential palace, people would come, people would always watch the president every Monday morning. They would greet him. He would come out of the palace and be hugged by the population. Today, you have barbed wire in front of the palace because the president is afraid of the people. Yeah. He knows the people know what's happening. Yeah. And, you know, and he's going to protect with the military tank, he's going to put the water, the gas, and attack, and then, innocent, and attack people innocent people, and kill innocent yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, there has been a petition going on against uh, people who are involved in, 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 in being violent towards the population, asking them to go, oh, there is another thing that's very interesting. During the protests, right after they made an agreement not to increase the prices, the day after, they went to the opposition, uh, the, the politicians who were on the opposition, went to their houses, arrested them, and they've been in prison since wow. with no charges. And, of course, they says, oh, they are, uh, it's seditious conspiracy, it's sedition, but no charges, no trial, and the opposition politician, a number of them are in jail, and people have been asking them to be released. Mm -hmm. 
So we live in a time in which people, the populations are waking up to their rights, but also of impunity. The governments doing the most insane things and no penalties, no consequences. So it's a very, it's an interesting time of the population waking up to their rights, but the presidents who are going against the will of the people seem to be comfortable doing violations against human rights, hurting the population, and they are sticking to their power despite of huge numbers of people saying, we want you to leave the presidency. You're not representing the people. So it's a really, uh, it's a time to ask, what is behind all this? Organizations like the organizations uh, um, of, 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 of the American states saying there is fraud when they have proven there has been no fraud. Violence against the population, the innocent people who are just protesting, they're not armed. And the police, I have seen so much brutality in this last uh, October, November, December against the population of Chile, Bolivia, and Ecuador. So um, it's really a time in which I think it's very important that um, people who are concerned with, you know, the rights of people and the well-being of normal, uh, just regular, the regular population, they're being violated. And it's interesting because I think about the film Blow Up by Antonioni. A photographer goes to a park to take a picture of a couple that he thinks is in love, and then he photographs something horrible. Eventually, he discovers that his photograph, his picture that he took was about a crime. Mm -hmm. And I started making a film about Korea because I wanted to make a film about something positive that was taking place in South America. And suddenly, so my film up, <laughs> turns into something <laughs> that I, I just can't believe, like a, a, a traitor that w wins on the ticket of Rafael Correa, betrays all his promises, and he's staying in power. So it, you never know what is going to happen next. Uh, the, the world is so uncertain. Look at Brexit. Look at what's happened in England. Uh, look what's happening here. I think we live in a, in a time of the absurd. Yes, but it's also a possibility to go to a new direction. And I think it, it's, it has these two sides to it. Yeah, and I, we have the two sides. The thing is, the people who are standing up are suffering. And, and for me, this is— Yeah, but is they were suffering before, so it's not like a new— No, but so South America was in a—before a, a, all this pressure against—actually, I want to mention one thing that I think it's very important. I, I, somebody sent me a video, and there was a priest, and this priest was showing how all the socialist presidents of South America had bank accounts in the, uh, the Bank of the Vatican. And I looked at that video and I thought, oh my God, I'm so naive. Yes, are they corrupt? And then I looked at the video again and I looked, and because I'm a filmmaker and I know how sync sound can be, you can actually take an image and bring a, a different sound and edit things. And I realized that that was manipulation of video and sync. And what the priest was saying was the voice of somebody else. And I thought, for a regular audience, they might see this and say, look, yes, the socialist presidents had accounts of money that they were hiding, that they stole from their con those countries. And I wrote something in the internet, please, this video is not true. Look that the sound is not synchronous. The sound was recorded separately, and this is manipulation. 
Today, the technology allows for fake news that the regular audience, like if my parents saw this, they would believe it. They yeah, don't... Yeah, but fake news was always fake news. I mean, it's not new. I mean, the technology is a bit more developed, but it was fake posters, it was fake newspaper, it was fake uh, I, I, uh, I, recording, I, it was fake... Of it, course, it, it, but I think, I think people are confused. I, I don't... I don't entirely blame the general public. People hear things, they don't know, and then you have to explain to them. I think we live in a time in which there's so much manipulation. And most people are, I have to read five newspapers to get to the bottom of something. We do, we do, we do. We need education, we need to read newspapers, we need to be involved, we need to get uh, institutions who are responsible for their act. We do, it's nothing, it's magic, it's no democracy, and you cannot fight against violence by a magical tell, then you're going to work and go home and watch your kids grow up. It's not happening. I think, and, the, I think the world is more complex now. Absolutely. To get to the truth, you have to dig and you have to work hard. And a lot of people don't have the time or, you know, the energy to get to the bottom of things. The thing is, there's a lot of manipulation with the information yeah. today. And a lot of people don't understand what's happening. And, and that's why um, we are doing the show today. That's yes, to, that's, to, why that's, we're that's why talking. it's very important to talk about it and be able to uh, give some information. That's really uh, that's really challenging, but it's that's what it's has to important. be done. It's important. It's so. important to to share the people who are in media, especially independent media, to talk about what is important today and what is really happening. I um, I. Having seen, actually in Ecuador, there were also people who became blind less with the tear gas and the violence of the police against the people. The funny thing is that when we think about the original concept, the police is supposed to protect the population. Now they protect the dishonest people. Exactly. It's a, no, it it's absolutely. an insanity. Every, yeah, it's insanity. It's an insanity. Yeah. The police doesn't protect the people. Yeah. But the people pay taxes. That pays the police yeah. and to, the president. To be beat up on the street. Yeah, the people pay taxes that that will pay the police, that will go against them. And we and call the them the hero, and then we go giving them medal and everything, where the teachers, the doctors, the nurse, the... Who, well, who cares? I mean, they save life every day. No one's going to say, oh, they need to get a medal, they need to get a statue. No. I no. hope, I hope. Violence, it's always, we sell violence all, the, all day long. Yes, but it's very unfortunate. Yeah. And I, I just hope that those presidents whose populations are protesting and want them to leave, not to be, no longer to be the president, acknowledge that the desire of the people is that they go and uh, you know it, it's I, I just find I am always puzzled by the craziness that's going on in the world less word less word I want the people to stand up and get the results they want for their countries thank you so much for coming thank, thank you, you thank you that was your show face to face and please keep watching your news on presenza.com and then subscribe, send the link to your friend, your family and uh, hope to see you very soon. Thank you.